Hi, Floss Tube. My name is Nithya, and you are at my cross stitch Floss Tube channel, Daybreak Stitchery. It's almost the end of September, so I'm just um, catching up with you to see, um, show you what I've been working on in September. The end of the month technically falls during the week this month, so uh, I'm recording a few days early um, just because there's time today. <laughs> so um, I have lots to show you, so we're going to get right into it. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for um, checking this out if you're here today. So um, I, I'm going to start with finishes. I have a lot of them. <laughs> so they're uh, they're not all stitchy. Some are stitchy, some are um, crochet-y. So I'm just going to, um, let me just start. So the first one that is the most exciting is I made a pillow. Isn't it so cute? You're going to recognize this. This is my Bon Iver um, cross stitch from last, well, the past couple of months I had been working on it. Um, this was the pattern where I combined the, these DMC free, this is a floral star, Fleur Etoile by DMC. That's what these star patterns are. And then this Bon Iver was, oh gosh, the calligraphy alphabet. I think it's from Christie Patterns. No, it's from Lifted Spirit uh, Calligraphy Font on Etsy. And this was the tribute to uh, the TV show Northern Exposure that I love so much. Well, I had, and I stitched it on um, 36 Count Dark Umber from Color and Cotton. And I had thought last month that I had wanted to turn it into a pillow. And um, so I gave it a go. <laughs> and uh, I had this fabric. Here's what it looks like on the back. I just found this fabric. Uh, I'll try to look up the shop. I don't remember what the shop was where I found that. Like I had got kind of like these quarter yard, maybe eighth of a yard pieces of fabric. And this one was called Snowfall. And I thought that would be good because Bon Iver means good winter. Um, so it kind of goes along with it. And plus it has these sort of same muted tones that are in the stitching are in that fabric too. It's a dark blue and like that kind of beigey tan. So I think it worked out okay. And I was very uh, nervous to do it. And I mean, I'll show you because I don't mind. Where did it go? Oh, right up here in this top corner. So like I hand, so I hand stitched it. And then um, this corner right here gets a little sloppy. So the awesome Catherine from, um, you know, Catherine and Victoria from Neat and Knot, she actually Zoomed with me to teach me how to do a ladder stitch so that I could fix this corner. So I think I might actually like, there's one th strand of thread that's right here where I kind of like very sloppily piece that together. And if, if I can get myself together, I might take that out and use um, the tips that Catherine showed me. She actually had me practice. We had a really nice chat. Catherine, thank you. This, listen, if Catherine messages you and offers to um, stitch live with you and walk through like, how to take her up on it because it was a fantastic time and I enjoyed our time Catherine and plus like this ladder stitch look at how neat my practice one is so I, ha I can much more confidently kind of close up a pillow seal up a pillow I think with Catherine's help so uh yeah I hand stitched it I don't have a machine so that's kind of why um, I had talked with Catherine about it because I mentioned in my last video that I, I was after Catherine in her video had mentioned that she does a lot of hand sewing. I thought, oh, maybe I'll try to hand sew it because that's a thing you can do. And what helped me the most with hand sewing this is that I actually used the holes in the linen. This is 36 count linen. I used the holes in the linen while I was doing, I did a back stitch, which is you all, most of you stitch, so you already know this, but it's like you put the needle in and then you bring it back and then you put it back in and then you bring it back. So you're kind of like working this way and you're, it's just a straight stitch. Um, but I used the holes to line up where I was stitching. I pinned the whole thing together first. So I pinned 
I put the right side of my lint, my stitching and the right side of the back together so that the, they were on the inside. And I pinned the whole thing down with like probably 30 pins. I had a whole bunch of pins holding it down. And then I just used those holes and I, I made sure to go to follow the line of the holes in the linen. And that kept my line of stitching straight. So my, my um, stitching is actually, I feel pretty good about it. It's just that seam. And honestly, I don't really care that it's a little messy because it's going to go like on a bookshelf <laughs> and I, it'll be high up and I probably won't see it. But just for practice, I might take it out and try to um, clean it up. Maybe, maybe. I'm not sure. So pillow. I actually did a practice pillow. Um, I mean, that's a finish too. So I'll just go ahead and show you that. I did a practice pillow um, last week. And for this one, this, um, I took one of my smalls, which I've shown in an older video. It's a squirrel, a Quaker squirrel from Gazette 94, which is an awesome blog. Uh, it's a French cross stitch blog and there's tons of free patterns there. Um, wonderful designer. And it's, it's so fun to look through those patterns. And so I found this little Quaker squirrel and I had stitched that a long time ago. So I was looking through smalls and I thought, well, let me just try practicing a pillow on one of my smalls. So this was on, uh, I don't know what, what linen this is because it's a mystery linen that came in a grab bag from 123 Stitch. But I had picked up what quilters call a charm pack. So it's like a, let me see if I have the label for it. It's like a set of, yeah, I do. Chart. This is the um, label that came with the charm pack. So a charm pack is a stack of squares that are used for quilting, fabric squares. There were 42 of them in this pack. This was about 10 bucks from Etsy. And they're pre-cut, so they're all the same size. Oh, here, I actually have some sitting here. So like all these squares, they're all kind of like these coordinating fabrics. Um, similar colors, just slightly different patterns. And they're all the same size and they come in a pack pre-cut. They have these like kind of jagged edges to them. Are you seeing, see how they're kind of like got that um, serrated edge kind of finish. So I saw those on Etsy and I thought, oh, that'd be great to practice making pillows, <laughs> doing hand stitching pillows. So then I wanted to practice with some actual stitching. So that's what I did. And again, I have kind of a, a shoddy finish to it. I keep, Catherine told me that it would be a good idea to, try to leave the opening so like you stitch all around right and you leave an opening to stuff your pillow before you seal it up well she suggested somehow mine were always ending up on the corner like i would that's where the opening would be left and it's harder to seal up on a corner so um she suggested to like go from here to here and then leave this oh, oh no a bottom she said to leave like this open on the bottom and stuff it through there so or that's the bottom so i would do that next time i like want to make a bunch of pillows now. <laughs> it's not that hard to do. Um, oh no, some of my stuffing just came out of this thing. Anyway, I'll fix that. Um, my stuffing is repurposed. We took apart our old couch. We had a really old couch when we moved and it had like a pen had exploded on it. So it had a huge ink stain. It had food stains. It was so old and gross. And so we, we weren't going to try even try to give it away. So Steve broke it down. He like sawed it up and broke it down in our garage and we're reusing the wood. We're um, going to try to use it in the garden. And then he put all the like good, there was still really good stuffing in there, like fiber filly kind of stuff that um, he put if it was enough to fill a whole garbage bag. So he kept that in the garage. And then when I it was pillow time, I thought, oh, I'm going to use some of that couch stuffing. And that was the part he was the most proud of. Like when I showed him, now it's going to look messy because there's some stuffing coming out of here. But when I showed him this tiny practice pillow, he, he put it up to his head. He's like, oh, it's so soft. Where'd you get this? And I said, ah, I'm repurposing our stuffing from the couch. So he was so proud that it came in, you know, came in hand. He's really good about reuse and things like that. So, so, uh, yeah, now I'm going to be one of those people that makes a whole bunch of pillows, I think. I'm going to have to get a basket and like put all my pillows there. So that was fun. This little one, to hand stitch it, it took me maybe about an hour to do. And then this larger one, maybe a little over two hours. 
So it's, it's, it takes a little while, but it's very calming. Catherine's right. It's very calming to, to hand stitch. She finds it very relaxing and it's true. And because you have the lines to help you line up your stitching, it's like not stressful at all. It's really, really relaxing to stitch. So make a pillow. I watched, I was telling Catherine, I, I just watched so many videos about pillow finishes because I was feeling anxious to do it because you don't want to ruin your stitching, right? Like this took me time. <laughs> I don't know how much time, but it took me time to do this design. So, um, you know, you don't want to ruin it by putting stitches into it and like having to take them out or whatever, but it's actually, it's, I did not hit, need multiple tries to make this on my first go. It was fine. So definitely, definitely worth doing again. I would definitely make more pillows. Um, I wanted to show you this wrapper again. This was the, that charm pack that I picked up. And here's what it says on the back. It's 42 squares. They're cotton, five inch squares. So now I have a bunch and I, this is going to be great. I can make more small pillows. I could like, I kind of want to play around with embroidery too. Like I could stitch, like maybe use white and stitch like swirls or something into here and then make that a pillow too. It just feels like there are some different possibilities with thread and fabric by having some of these around. So I'm kind of excited to have these here now. Plus they're nice dark colors. Like I like that it was a contrast, like these colors, this is red and black. It's, oh, I haven't told you anything about the threads. These threads were coloring cotton and they came in a fabric, uh, no, thread of the month club. Um, and I, for a while, if you've been watching my old videos, I had been talking about how I'd been trying to use up for like find projects to start each month with my thread club colors. And so that was one of the projects I had started. And then this one is, um, silks for you, silks for you, zero six, eight PR zero six, eight. So it's like a red and black, red to black blend. And I had used this in my henna mandala project, um, from some time ago. So I have some of that left. And I, anyway, my point is I like the contrast. It's not exactly, I mean, it's like the dark tones from PR068 are kind of echoed in this dark fabric, but not necessarily. And that's okay. I like that there's the two different colors. So I think those fabric, those little fabrics are going to come in really handy. I'm happy about that. Okay. Pillow finishes, everybody. Isn't that exciting? Do you, I'm curious about you. Do you, fin do you, you know, have you stitched pillows? Have you had success with pillows? Um, what do you think? Do you have a favorite way to finish pillows? Do you have a favorite place where you get fabric to finish your pillows? I'm, I'm all about pillows now. So let me know what you think about that. Okay. Uh, another finish, I'm going to show you a crochet one. Um, next, just because I made a random list and that's the next one on the list. So this is a cowl that I've been working on and uh, it's not a pat. It's not based on a pattern. It's just uses a basic Tunisian crochet stitch. I won't talk much about this because I know most of you are here for cross stitch, but I wanted to show you because I'd shown it in another video in my older videos and I wanted to show you that I finished it. So Tunisian crochet basically is a crochet stitch that looks like knitting. So you can see it looks like a knit stitch, um, but it was actually achieved with a crochet hook. And I love this so much. This is the perfect height and the perfect um, like circumference for me. It fits like basically right here and it's snug and I can like lift it up a little bit too and it stays on. So it's the perfect um, length. So this is gonna basically measure like all my other cowls. <laughs> going to be the um, way for me to measure. This yarn is a DK weight and it's by Treehouse Knits and it's called Rosewood. And I'll put, I'm going to put the names of as many things as I can in the comments. I usually link, but I don't know if I'm going to, I haven't put the links into my notes today, but I will definitely put names of um, whatever I'm doing, patterns and everything. There's a go-to Tunisian crochet video that I use. You know, if I have, I've been Tunisian crocheting a lot lately, so I don't need to use the video, but sometimes if I've been away from it, I forget how to do like the basic foundation row or things like that. So there's a go-to video that I use. So I will link that one below too, in case you're curious and want to check it out. It's by Claudetta Crochet, um, who also has a lot of really cool 
instructional crochet videos. I'm picking lint out. So I, I'm, I have like a sheet on the table where I'm laying everything down and it's like full of lint somehow. So now I'm picking lint out of everything. Okay. Um, shall I show you a cross stitch finish? I think you'll be excited by this. Although some of you have seen it already because I put it on my Instagram account. So this was a start and finish for this month. Totally unexpected. I did not know I was going to pick it up. And then I picked it up and I, I really ran with it. So uh, the pattern is American Harmony by Summer House Stitch Works. And um, if you know me at all, you know that I don't really stitch patriotic patterns, especially references to older things because older times were not very inclusive of everyone. Um, but I just loved, I love the blue and red um, designs there in the center. And I, I, and it's small. And I thought, hmm, I'm, I think I'm going to do something to modernize this and make it more relevant to our times. So I made mine a tribute to Kristen Garvey and the women, no, the Wisconsin Alliance for Women's Health. And so I'm going to show this to you first and then we'll talk about it. Oh, sorry about that, everybody. Let me see if I can hold it up so you can see it. So I think you can see it, but I'll read it. It's um, It includes all these slogans from all these different movements that work towards inclusion. So Black Lives Matter, love is love, no human is illegal, and women's rights are human rights. And I stitched in Kristen Garvey's name, and then there's a WAWH for the Wisconsin Alliance for Women's Health. So Kristen Garvey is a librarian from Wisconsin, and in 2017, she was feeling the same way that a lot of us were feeling, just kind of wondering, worried and wondering about like, who are we as a country and what do we stand for and what do we want to be? What kind of future do we want us to have? What do we believe in? And she went home from work one day and had a marker and got some poster board and made a sign that kind of included all of these values and all these slogans from all these different movements to just kind of re reiterate to herself, like, yes, we do believe in these things. This is who we are. And she put that sign out on her um, in her yard and it got a lot of positive attention. And a couple of people approached her about making a more official version of the sign to then sell and use as a fundraiser for the American Civil Liberties Union, the, the ACLU, which does a lot to fight for human rights here. So um, that's what she did. So. These, these slogans and the lawn signs that you might have in your own neighborhood, they come from Kristen Garvey and from, um, well, what happened was um, Kristen Garvey and the women who made it into that lawn sign, they earned more than like $7,000 for the ACLU. And then it just became too big for them to handle on their own. You know, they all had day jobs. So they handed the design over to the Wisconsin Alliance for Women's Health. And now they're the ones who sell the lawn sign with all the slogans. Um, I didn't fit science is real on there. And I didn't fit kindness is everything. They wouldn't fit. But um, but you know what I'm talking about. So if you want an official lawn sign with those, you know, those slogans on there, you want to get it from the Wisconsin Alliance for Women's Health, which I will try to link them below so you can see, so that the proceeds are actually going to a cause and not just to like, you know, someone who has copied the design and they're selling it on like Cafe Press or Zazzle or something. And, you know, that money goes into their pockets versus towards the fundraiser. So I donated to them, you know, with all this, there's so much going on with women's losing access to women's health and let's not even go there. I want to keep this happy today. So I wanted to do something to um, honor this time. And I also wanted to do something where I could donate back to the Wisconsin Alliance for Women's Health. So that's what I did. I made a donation and then I stitched this. So that's that. So this fabric is um, 36 count boardwalk by Color and Cotton. And once again, I'm stitching on a fabric and I'm thinking, why, oh, why did I not, not 
get a few more pieces of this because it's so pretty. It's like, it's just a beige. It's just a simple beige, but it, it works really well with these darker colors. The threads are classic color works. They're the called for. It's cherry cobbler and blacksmith blue. And um, one thing I did, so I did not chart my changes. I just kind of started and went with it. So I started with um, this side here, the Black Lives Matter side. And I don't know if you're going to notice it. I'm going to try to get in really close. So the, the pattern is stitched two over two, except for the lettering, which I stitched one over one because it wouldn't have fit otherwise. So to make the font smaller, but still easy to read, I stitched it one over one, which wasn't hard to do on this lighter colored fabric. It was easy enough to do. The part that became challenging is when, since I wasn't charting it out, I was just kind of figuring it out as I went along. On this, no, on this side, when I got to the corner and needed to turn around, I, I would try it and then not like the spacing of it or the positioning of it. It's the frogging out of the one over one on 36 count was a nightmare to do. And it took forever to do. So like this part, the main design stitched up quick, like in a couple of nights. The lettering took forever to do. And then when I kept making, like basically every corner I turned, I made mistakes on it. I had to take stitches out. It's just so fine when you're working with one strand over one. The stitches are so fine. I could see them, but when I was tugging them out, they would like rip and, you know, it, it wasn't good. So that was a little bit cumbersome, but I think the effect is worth it. I tried doing backstitch letters and they didn't have the prominence that I felt like they needed. So I stuck with this one over one. And I'm pretty happy with it. The um, alphabet that I used is a freebie from Lord Libidan. And it's the very first one. If you go, um, they've got a page on their website. I'll put it below where they've got 50 free fonts for cross stitch. And this one is the tiniest one. It's five stitches high. So if you take a look there, each of those letters is five stitches high. So, and it's the very first one in, the, in that list of fonts. It's organized by stitch height. So five is the smallest that's available. So it's going to be the very first one in that list. So that's what I used. Pretty happy with it. I like how it turned out. Um, yeah. I think this is what, you know, like if we're going to stitch patriotic, it has to be inclusive. It has to represent who we are today. So... That's why I kind of feel like this is one way to do that. I don't know. I still am not super drawn to patriotic stitches, but if I am in the future, I think I would do something similar. So starting to finish. I was shop I had been shopping for DMC threads for to finish kitting up. There's a Carolyn Manning piece that I had shown in my last video, but I didn't have all the DMC I needed for it. So I was picking some up at 123 stitch and then you know how it is. You're on the website, you look at what's available, and then you see this beautiful thing, you're like, "Well, it's so small I could do it." And then it's in your shopping cart and then you're working on it even when you had no plans to start anything like that. So that's how it goes. Um, this is the boardwalk that I was using 36 count um, an eighth of a yard. It's a small piece and I only used a quarter of it so I can fit other projects on there too. The, these, um, quarter, no, eighth of a yard pieces, they're pretty like decently priced on color and cotton. I think they're only like 10, 11 bucks. So they're very affordable. Okay. Um, we're still on finishes everyone. This is going to be another long one, I think. So I stitched another cow, uh, crocheted another cowl. This one right here. This is a true crochet one. It's not a Tunisian crochet. So if you look at it, you see all those kind of like curly, um, well, they're not curly. They're sort of like angled stitches. Uh, those are crochet stitches. And crochet, you can usually tell, let me see if I can find one, like these little teeth that go down into the next stitch. That's kind of a good sign of crochet. So this cowl is from Fiber and Fox, the pattern on, um, it's from Fiber and Fox, they're on Etsy. And it was advertised as a one skein DK weight yarn cowl, like you could finish it in one skein. And I do have a little bit extra left. I like it a lot. It's just not long enough. So like I'll wear it 
it's definitely good. Like when it gets colder and I need to go, go do yard work and stuff, it's going to be perfect. It fits pretty snug. It's a little loose. Like, um, I'm not able, like if I pull it up over my face, it slides down. It's just a little bit too loose, but it will, I think it'll keep my neck warm, which is fine. I would like to make another one and try to just make it a little bit taller so that it gathers up a little bit more. So this yarn is by Arcane Fiberworks. Um, Arcane Fiberworks, and it's called Autumn Drive. I love, you're going to sense a theme here because I love fall leaf colors. I just love like reds and oranges and yellows. I love seeing fall color. And um, I love those like what they're very warm colors. I like that a lot. And brown, you know, some browns in there too. I like all that. So let me hold that up again. That was a quick one. It took um, like half a day to do. So that was nice. I would do I, I would try that pattern again and I would just make it longer. This, um, see how it gets smaller at the top? That was achieved not by decreasing stitches, but just by changing the size of the hook um, into one that was a smaller hook. So it created smaller stitches. So I kind, I kind of like that. Then you don't have to learn how to do a decreased stitch um, or look up how to do one, even though you know one and you've forgotten how to do it. So um, just by changing the hook size, but keeping the stitch the same, it makes smaller stitches. So I, I thought that was pretty good. Okay, I have I have another finish to show you. So this one is a small. I had done um, Jesse from Mislaid Pages. They had started the season of smalls, kind of. I guess it's a challenge. It's a competition. It's not competition, but you know, you can you can fill out a form and let her know, let them know that you've done one. And then there are prizes and stuff if you feel up to it. So I did um, one of these Barn Stars by Summerhouse Stitchworks. Let me see if I can get in real close so you can see some of them. I didn't, I haven't fully finished it yet. I've just stitched, I stitched um, this one. So this is a, a little like a booklet and it's got seven of these stars, like ornament, seven small patterns. And I wanted to do them because I wanted to send a thank you to um, my friend Erica, who is a knitter and crocheter, and she always donates when I'm doing fun, like stitchy fundraisers. And I wanted to make her something to send to her. So that's what I did here. And I, I think it's great. I love how it turned out. It's kind of unconventional colors, but. So are you getting a little bit of the sparkle at all? Because I used a twall on it. Oh, there we go. Maybe when I move it up and down. Are you seeing a little sparkle? So this is one of the um, eight uh, barn stars. And I'll show you what I used exactly. I used these two colors of DMC Etoile. And DMC Etoile is um, a cotton thread that's got like a little filament going through it that makes that adds that sparkle this is probably not very environmentally friendly sorry Catherine and Carly I need to do better with environmentally um, friendly fibers so the etoile it so okay so etoile it's DMC so it uses the same numbers as regular DMC. So regular DMC, this would be 471. It's like an avocado green, but they use a letter C in front of it. So it's C471, and that's the code for the 812 version of 471. This one is 890. C890 because it's 812. So that's what I use. Let me hold up stitching again. There you go. So it turned out great. It took me like a good evening to do it. I really enjoyed stitching with the Etoile. It's puffy. Etoile is, when it stitches, it has kind of poof to it. You can already see when you see the skein, see how it's kind of poofy. So that's great for me because I love when stitches get covered totally, when the fabric totally gets covered by stitches. So there's no danger of, you know, fabric poking through. It's got a really tight finish. 
So I don't know if it'll focus up for you to see it, but I think you're getting the idea. So I don't know how I'm going to finish this. Maybe I'll make a pillow out of it, but I'm going to do something with it and send it to Erica. Erica, my friend Erica donated again. So I'm doing the marathon for MMIW and I'm raising money. Um, I'm participating in that as a stitcher and raising money to donate to the Coalition to Stop Violence Against Native Women. I'll put the link to that below in case you want to donate or if, in case you just want to see. Um but Erica donated on there twice and I need to talk to, I haven't talked to her yet since the second donation. Anyway, I need to stitch something for her. So this is it. I'm going to turn this into something for her. Okay. This fabric, hold on. It still has the tag on it so I can tell you what it is. Okay. This is from to die for fabrics on Etsy. And can I just tell you to die for fabrics? I, I, you know, I love color and cotton. I talk about them all the time, but this is Kimberly at To Die For Fabric. She's given me something to think about here because she's got some really beautiful dyes to her fabrics. This is what the stitch looks like on there. And I don't know if it'll come through in the video, but this is, let me, what was this color? Hang on a sec. Canyon Clay is the color. Canyon Clay but it has bits of green in it. It's not coming through on the video, but it's got like patchy greens. Sorry, that might've been kind of loud where the tag ran against my speaker. So it it's providing an awesome, like I'm seeing it. It's got like green, like bright green running through it too. And so it's providing a great kind of coordinating color to the colors I'm stitching with. And that was totally, oh, that's the back, totally unintentional. And I didn't even notice it while I was stitching. It was only afterwards when I stitched and I kind of like set it back and looked at it. I thought, oh my gosh, there's green in this fabric. So it's perfect. I would like to stitch more of those barn stars um, on this. Oh, there you go. Can you kind of see like tinges of green like over off to the side down here? So it's really nice. And um, I'm, I'm going to get more fabric, I think, from To Die For Fabrics. And I have another one that I got from there that I'll show you too, that I've picked up from them. Okay. I'm going to check my notes real quick and make sure I didn't forget something that I wanted to tell you. Um, oh, yeah. Summer House Stitchworks. That, so now that's two patterns I've stitched because my Amer that American Harmony was Summer House Stitchworks and the Barn Stars are Summer House Stitchworks. And I actually have another one that's like, barely kitted up. It's a little bit kitted up. I'll try to put a picture in. Summer House Stitchworks does these yearly series of smalls called Fragments in Time. And I picked up when I was at my local needle workshop this summer, I picked up a few of the, they, they come on little cards. I should have brought it up here to show you. They come on little cards and there's a series of about eight of them and they change the motifs every year. So I picked up a few of the cards from the 2018 series. They're in these super bright kind of reds and teals and yellow colors. And I saw it stitched up at Inspired Needle when I was there this summer. And Nancy had stitched all eight parts, like four, four blocks and four blocks, um, and had it as a model hanging up in the store. And it was so beautiful. And she had made it a tribute to her mom, who I think passed away recently. Um, and it was, she had done just such a beautiful job and she used the called for threads on it. I didn't like all of the motifs. Like I don't really stitch houses. And I think there was a motif with maybe a year on it. I didn't go for that one, but I liked all the like botanical motifs and then the birds. So I picked those up and I have that kind of partially kitted, but that's another summer house stitch works that I want to do. I'm kind of loving their patterns. So that would be the third one that I start. And I also want to do the inheritance sal. I'll try to put a picture up for that one that Shiloh and Yamir are doing. Shiloh, who is ex stitch MD and Yamir, you know, from Almond m &Ms. They're doing one called the inheritance sal, which is sort of like a family sampler. Like you stitch the motifs and then you stitch your family members initials into it. And I would let, I have an idea. I have so many ideas and not enough time and I never finish anything and I keep starting new ideas, but that one I would want to do in, um, greens and oranges 
because my inheritance is like Indian culture and the Indian flag is oranges and greens. And even though I don't really connect super well to Indian culture, I feel like that will be a lifelong journey of mine to like try to connect. So I thought that'd be cool to stitch that one because it's called inheritance and it has to do with family to stitch that in. Um, yeah, oranges and greens. So it's an idea. Who knows when it'll happen? I should probably like try to finish some other things first. So, okay, that was finishes. So um, we're going to keep moving along. I have some works in progress I can show you. Let's look at some of those. So the first one, I'll pull it up here. I have it. Yeah, I have it here. Is the Tokapu Sal. Toka, it's called Tokapu and it's by per Peruvian Flair and there was a cell for it and I think it's it's come and gone. Uh, but it's this really beautiful um, textile pattern that's based on a Peruvian, pre-Columbian textile. And I love it so much. It's got beautiful colors. Have I worked on it? So, yeah, I did work on it since this month, just a tiny bit. I added this right here. I think that's what I added this month. I need to get back to it. This is totally doable to finish. The only thing I noticed, I did not prepare exactly. On the, on the pattern for it, I'll see if I can put a picture up of the finished pattern so you can see it. It's, I think it's a full coverage piece. So like all this bit that I'm leaving blue in here, I think that's all filled in. I think I'm missing a shade because I'm using the suggested color scheme which was a black, a brown, a red, and a white. But I think there's a fifth color in there, which is kind of like a beige color and in between a white and a brown. And I think that's used to fill in here. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to leave that blue in there or if I'm going to try to find a fifth color to fill that in. I mean, I should probably just do the rest of it first and see how it looks, and then I can make a decision. This is a 28 count mystery linen from XJU Design. I'm stitching three over two. And then these are different, they're Gentle Art and Valdani cottons that I'm using. So definitely wanna put more stitches in that one. I like that project a lot. These are, um, well, I don't have the threads pulled out, but I can show you my card. I didn't make cards for all my projects this time, but I have my cards from last time. So it's small, 95 by 95. Maybe that'll be one I try to chip away at this month. Uh, that was uh, Tokapu by Peruvian Flair. And you can find the patterns on Etsy. And it's um, Ana Aguayo from Peruvian Flair. And she just put out a new one, a new, like a Tokapu part two. And it looks amazing too. But I don't feel ready to get that one yet. I feel like I need to finish this one first. Okay, next work in progress. I didn't do much on this one, but I'll show you what little bit I did. Um, this is monochromatic tree. Well, that's what I'm calling it. Um, by Cross Stitch Row on Etsy. Oh no, I'm still folding the wrong side. There we go. So I will try to put a picture up. Basically, we're looking at the top of a tree. So it's branches on a tree. And the birds are landing, um, that bird up there is flying towards the top of the tree. And there's a bird sitting on a branch on the tree. It's an enormous tree. And um, I did the part that I did was this part right here. Like all this in here. Um, no, this part I had done already, that side. And this part I did this month. I added like these couple of branches here. So I really love this one. And I'm using Pattern Keeper to track the stitches. This fabric is Halloween Pumpkin by XJU Design. I like it because it, it has kind of a sunset look to it. So it's going to look like a tree silhouetted in the sun um, with the sun setting behind it. Definitely want to go back to that one. Um, I have a cool um, Instagrammer to recommend. I'm going to pull them up really quick and show you the picture. It's Petite Haru 25 on Instagram. Let me pull them up. Cause
because they're doing the same project, but they're doing theirs in red. And it is stunning. It is so pretty. Let me see if you can you'll be able to see it. That's how it's going to look. So they've done way more of the tree. They've done the trunk and they have like a whole side of the tree done. Petite Haru um, 25. I'll put their Instagram name down below and you can see what all they're working on. It doesn't say what color threads they're using, but it's like a deep, deep, like a burgundy red. It's really beautiful. So, um, and I think Steph's working on that. Um, stitching it, stitching it. Um, Steph, I think, is doing this one, too, in black. And I forget what, what fabric Steph's using. But hers is, she's progressing a lot. And it looks amazing. So that would be a good one to see if you want to see what um, one that is actually starting to look like a tree instead of mine that just looks like random branches. That would be a good one to see. Okay. Next one is a restart. So, okay. So... I restart things because so I'm approaching my first my first year anniversary on floss tube. It's going to be next month because I started around like October 11th or 12th. I started over Indigenous Peoples Day weekend um, last year, which was like around the 11th or 12th of October. And one of the things I'm realizing now as I'm wrapping up a year is that I've started projects on fabrics that I just won't run to stitch on. I just won't, I don't find them appealing to stitch on. So like things where I've started like this um, next project, it's the Linens and Threads 2020 family sampler. I started it on a 32 count one over one. I'm never going to go back to that. I mean, I could, it would be really beautiful and small. I think I was trying to make it small because it's a really big project, but I just won't stitch that. It's just uncomfortable to stitch on. So I just pulled up a buddy, 18 count, my stand, I, I love going to 18 count Ada or 36 count linen. Those are kind of like, that's my sweet spot for stitching. So oftentimes when I do a restart, uh, that's what I'll do. I'll go to something that's much more comfortable to stitch on. So um, once again, Kimberly at To Die For Fabrics, I picked up this one, which is called Buckskin. And I'm going to see, here you go. Do you see the variegation in it? So this is one of the reasons why I'm starting to really like To Die For Fabrics by um, Kimberly. She is one of the few people that can get some decent variegation, like um, marbling going on Ada, on 18 count Ada. It's really, really hard to find marbling on 18 count Ada because 18 count Ada doesn't take to dye very well. You can do it on 14 count and sometimes on 16 count too, and definitely on linen, right? Linen takes dye really well, but for some reason, the 18 count Ada just doesn't. And Kimberly's able to do it and I don't know how. So it looks really good. Um, so let me show you closer up. I'll try to put in a picture as well to show you what the finished one looks like. But I think a lot of you have probably seen this one. It's the 2020 linens and threads. They do, you know, the mystery sampler where they put in, um, they release a part every month. So this was the one from 2020. And um, even on my original version of this that I had been working on, I was using these same colors. So I didn't change the colors out. I just changed my choice of fabric. And the colors I chose were based on um, an older video by Jacob, Modern Folk Embroidery. He had talked about how an interesting color scheme, and he had done it on a deer, small deer sampler, was to choose three shades of blue, a dark, medium, and a light blue. So I'm, I chose um, 3325, 798, and 823. And then to have a contrasting ochre color. And I chose 3826 for that. And then he suggested too to um, not only have solid colors of the of motifs and solid colors, but to also have motifs where you variegate, like you use very small strands so that you only accomplish a few stitches and then you have to swap out colors very frequently. So that's what I'm going for with like this motif here. So I'm going to do solid colors on some and then 
change the have color changing ones too. So that's what I'm going for on that one. It'll take a long time to do and it's really big. But this was only like a little bit, like a few days of stitching, a few evenings of stitching. So it works up really fast on Ada. So that's something. I'll be able to chip away at it, I think. Okay. I have one more whip to show you. Then we're going to talk about some new starts. I have a very exciting plan for later too. I can't believe I didn't mention it at the end, but it's okay. I'll mention it with plans. Okay. So next one. So it was um, sampler September this month. And I think a lot of people stitch on like reproduction samplers, but I'm not really crazy about reproduction samplers personally, just me. I know that they have beautiful motifs and a lot of people get a lot of joy of stitching them. And um, I understand why people like them, but I've just never super been drawn to reproduction ones. But I did like the colors and the message on this one. Um, it's by hands across the sea and it's called where flowers bloom and the message on it is where flowers bloom so does hope and i really liked that the message of hope the positivity around it i also like the really bright kind of floral motifs i'm not crazy about the house i don't really stitch homes um but i liked some of the other things so this was the one i talked about in an older video where i thought hmm why not try to modernize a sampler and make it more relevant of this sorry got distracted. Did I, I don't know if I told you on my last, the linens and threads one that I was using buckskin. That was the name. I think I did. Anyway, the idea of like modernizing a sampler so that it fits our time. Like if there, if I'm going to stitch a name of somebody on a sampler, why not have it be someone who inspires me or gives me hope? And now that this message is about hope, I thought this is going to be the perfect project where I could try to stitch the names of women who give me hope. And so I picked, that's what I picked up for Sampler September. I haven't shared this on Instagram, so I don't think anyone's seen it. And here's what I have so far. The fabric is a 32 count, it's extra design. I wanna say it's like a blue violet, a light blue violet, I think is the name of the color, because it is, it's not coming across, but it is a blue. It's like a bluish purple color. And the threads are Overaswa. It's 100.3 Overaswa, which I'm getting better and better at using. It was very difficult at first because it's very slippery, but I'm getting better at using it. It comes, I'll I have one here set aside to show you. So it's Overaswa. It comes on a spool like this. It's Overaswa 103. There you go 103 is what it's called and I have to put three strands together to make it work because I'm, I'm doing over two on this 32 count so it takes three strands to really cover um, the stitching but it's turning out pretty well so I did before I had done basically this the top border so I added the where flowers bloom I added a little bit of the floral I added the birds I added the heart and then I started Michelle Obama's name so Michelle Obama's name I'm and other names, I'm going to try also, just like I did with American Harmony, I'm trying to stitch one over one. Because if I do it over two, it's going to turn out really large letters like this. And I will barely have, like, there's not much room to work with for the names. Like, I'm basically going to be dealing with a space that's about, let me show it the right way. I only have about this much worth of space to work with. It's not going to be that much space to stitch names. And I have an enormous list of names and they're not all going to fit. Um, so I might have to figure that out. I'm going to have to either cut names out or try to work them in in other places. I'm going to have to see what I can do about that. Or I'll just fit in as many names as I can and then save other names for other projects too. So I think I'll, I'll figure it out. So it's going okay. So I'd come back to, I made pretty good progress on that. I basically like all this I did this month. I did, spent a good amount of like quite a few days on this one. 
if I go back to that one, it's really not that large. It's, um, don't have the card here. It's not that large. Um, the stitch count, is it on here? No, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm unprepared with that. I have some really cool names. I, I don't want to explain any of the names until I actually get their, get them stitched on since I don't know who I'm going to stitch on yet from my list. I'm going to wait until I stitch them and then I will talk about them. I mean, Michelle, come on, Michelle Obama. I mean, don't we want her name on every sampler we stitch? Like I would love having her name in my home. Just her name is so such an inspiration. Like it, it draws all these images of like sun and positivity and hope and everything. I cried. Did I tell you in my last or one of my older ones when I, um, Steve and I were at the Art Institute this summer to see that fantastic Visa Butler quilting exhibit. But at the same time, the Obama portraits were at the Art Institute here in Chicago. And um, they take you through, you, um, they kind of walk you through two, two or three rooms before they're in the very, the portraits were in the very last room um, of kind of a series. And along the way, they had all these big panels that tell you the stories of the artists who painted the Obama portraits. Um, we're talking about the official portraits that are usually in the National Gallery, right? But they're going on a traveling exhibit now. And um, on one of the panels, they had the photographs that the artists have, had taken. So they had um, both Obamas sit for photos you know, Michelle Obama's portrait has that gorgeous, like that white and black dress with the quilt patterns in it. And so there's a photo, a copy of the photo that was taken that was used as the image, you know, the model for the image that was painted. And I don't know what, what it was like. I turned a corner and it was there, that photo of her sitting there. I just started to cry. Even now, like thinking about it, I just started to cry. Like she, she is such an inspirational person. And I think like Part of that emotion was also like, how dare, how dare there be people who don't live up to like what she was? You know what I mean? Like the loss of someone, not the loss, but she stood for so much and she like brought hope and happiness to so many people. So the aftermath of that was so low that I don't know. That's part of that is that emotion wrapped up into that. You know what I mean? But it was, She's such a striking image, I think. I, I just love her so much. But I mean, we don't have to explain why we love her, right? We just love her. Okay, um, next, I think we're going to talk about some new starts because, you know, I just have them all the time. So um, one of them, actually, I only have three, so it's not too crazy this month, but one of them is by a designer and blogger from Japan named she um, she go I think she goes by Kaede Cross Stitch and I will link their Instagram name below so you can see or put it below so you can search for them. They have a really cute blog and they design and put a lot of free charts up on that blog. And so I noticed one once with a squirrel. Um, actually, I'm gonna pull it up really quick and I'll just show you because I haven't. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to put pictures from these accounts into the video. So I'll just go ahead and show you. So um, Kaede Cross Stitch, that's how it's written, but I'll put it in my notes below too. And I had seen this pattern. It's the cute little squirrels and those flowers. And I thought, man, that's really beautiful. And so I messaged them and I said, um, not message, I put a comment on that photo. And I said, that's a really cute pattern. Where'd you get that pattern? And they said, oh, I designed it. And I have this blog. And so I was poking around the blog and it, there were so many really cute patterns on there. And they also post like progress pics of just other designs that they're stitching, like other people's designs that they're stitching, their, pro their, their whips. So um, I thought I just replied back and I said, oh, it's really cute. You know, that's, that's a lovely pattern. Well, in a couple of weeks, they had charted it up and then they messaged it to me and they said, oh, you know, just, I thought you might be interested in seeing the chart for this. And um, that was so sweet. And then it disappeared um, from my Instagram messages. I don't know if that's a thing that just happens. I'm not too familiar with Instagram. And then um, I didn't see that pattern on their blog. 
So then I wasn't sure like, oh, did they just want me to look at it? Or is it okay if I stitch it? Because I really want to stitch it. And so I messaged them back and said, you know, I kind of want to stitch this. Are you sure? Would it be okay? And they said, yes, yes, yes. Please stitch it. Like, I'd love to see you stitch it. So, so I'm stitching it. So I'm using, now it doesn't look like much of anything yet. You're kind of starting to see shapes, basically. This right here is going to be the head of the squirrel. You can kind of see that maybe. Um, <clears throat> this is a little scrap of fabric from Xtru Design. It's a teeny tiny. And it's called Squirrel, <laughs> which I thought was so cute. So I wanted to use that. I love stitching. I don't, why do I like squirrels? Because right now they're really irritating me. Like they're basically digging up my garden. We have two, all summer we had no squirrels in the garden. And then this past month, there are two that have figured out how to come through our gate and come back. And they are stashing like all of their, we have become their closet, basically. They're stashing, like they're going down the block. There's a horse chestnut tree. They're bringing back those chestnuts all the way here. And then like they're showing, like I see little holes in amongst all my plants where they're stashing all this stuff. In the end, it's okay. It's just kind of, I don't want them to accidentally dig up a plant. You know what I mean? Anyway, despite that, I really love squirrels. And um, this is giving me a chance to use some of my club of the month from Color and Cotton. And then um, let me show them to you. I have them put aside here. And this blue is so pretty. The white is Hayride. And it just came, it came in one of the recent months, maybe August or September. I don't know. It's like a pale, pale, um, like a creamy yellow. It's not even really yellow. It's more of a cream color. This dreamy thing is um, iced blueberry. And it's got you're not going to see it, I bet. It's like a pale purple and a pale, pale blue. It's not going to come across on the screen, I think. But it, it may come across. You may see it in my stitching. See how there's kind of a shadowy blue and then a more brighter blue? I love it. It's really pretty. So I think those two, I tried to pick two colors that are like a good contrast for the orangey squirrel color. And I think once I actually get more of the motifs done, I hope it will stand out a little better. I liked the one that they did where they use dark, like that dark navy blue, and then the darker, what, what did they use? Like a brighter blue. That was pretty, I thought too. So I'm, I'm, I need to work on this because I want to show them. I don't want them to think that I just like saw the pattern and didn't do anything with it. You know, they like very sweetly sent it to me. So I want to make sure to try to stitch that, work on that, try to chip away at that one. Okay, another new start. I was um, organizing my craft room and I, I usually film down there. Um, today I just, I'm playing around with light a little bit. So I'm filming upstairs today and not in my basement, but that was, um, sorry, I'm so scattered. That extra, the squirrel um, is a 36 count um, linen. Sorry, forgot to mention that. I'm stitching it two over two. So, Cleaning my craft area downstairs, I found a kit. I found a teeny tiny kit that I'd gotten, I don't even know when, and it has some nice fall colors. So I, I pulled it up and uh, I'll show you the picture. That's the picture. It's a kit by Panna. I don't know if it's pronounced Panna or Panna, which uh, you're going to know more than I will on this for those of you who stitch um, kits. Are they Russian or are they Italian? I'm not really sure. It's an international kit company. And, um, this is called Chokeberry. Chokeberry Sprig. And it's got these beautiful fall colors and then the, um, dark purpley blue berries. And it came, the kit came with a 14 count oatmeal-y sort of Ada. I don't really stitch on 14 count. I tried it actually. I tried using... Let me show you these colors. Check these colors. Aren't they pretty? Um, I tried stitching with these on that 14 count and the coverage just was, it wasn't going to work for me. So I pulled one of my color and cotton fabrics and this is soft apricot. It's a pale peach. I don't think you're going to see it. It's looking kind of white, but it's actually like a peachy color. 
and I just love it. It's perfect because there are so many oranges and reds in the pattern that using a pale kind of orange just works. All the colors stand out on it. Now, this is giving me my first taste of what I think people must experience when they're stitching Hades, which is lots and lots of very similar colors all coming together, one right next to the other. It was um, tricky. It was tricky to stitch. It wasn't easy to stitch. I lost count. Even though the chart is very small, this this whole thing, it's like basically almost done. Like there's just another sprig of berries here and another little leaf here. There's not much to it. But the color changes are challenging. And actually one of those colors, here, let me hold it up again. So there's like two or three reds. There are these oranges here and then there's a couple yellows. And then a couple of the symbols you have to stitch with like one strand of dark red and one strand of light red or one strand of dark orange and one strand of light orange so like you're mixing colors too they all look the same when you stitch them so it i'm finding it challenging to stitch i don't know how people do hades <laughs> it must be so hard to do a hade because this even just a little bit is taking forever so i did it on an 18 count ada that's making it a little bit easier it does look good though doesn't it i mean i get it i get the effect of it because all those little color, all those little slight color changes are what create like the shades, the natural shades in it. So it's really pretty. I like it. I looked up chokeberries because I didn't know what they were. They're native to North America. Like they grow around here. And I'll try to include a link to the um, page from the Chicago Botanic Garden, which is in the north suburbs here. And they have a whole thing on chokeberries and they're really, it's, it's interesting. I, I'm a, a very novice level gardener, but I like reading about plants. And chokeberries usually grow in kind of marshy, very wet areas. They don't really recommend all, spe all types of them for your garden because they spread really easily. But there are some varieties that work really nice and they do have beautiful autumn like fall color the color change is really beautiful if you google chokeberry autumn or chokeberry fall you will see it. it's it's just like this it's really beautiful like reds yellows and oranges they look really pretty with like that striking purple berries and they make good winter color in your garden because they're called chokeberries because um birds are not attracted to them they're they're i guess the, not the right size and um, so the birds don't eat them up. So those purple berries will stay through like January. So if you need some, like just want some color in your yard, I guess they make for good garden color. Soft apricot, that was the color of the fabric. Color and cotton. I love me a color and cotton. Okay, I have one more new start. It's a pretty new, new start just from a couple days ago. It's, I have the pattern, I can show you. It's Blackbird by um, Blackbird Designs. And I picked this one up when I picked up, I, I've picked up a few kind of autumn themed patterns from Abby um, Topknot, um, Expo, Expo Designs. And this one I had been eyeing for some time. And I thought, you know what, this kind of looks like an autumn pattern. I mean, it's got that moon, the using black, um, kind of leaves. And when I got the pattern, look at how they've decorated on the back. They have a little pumpkin back there too. So it's very fall. I like stitching fall. So fall seasonal. I like all seasonal stuff. So this one I'm using, actually, I'll show you. It's the same fabric that I used for um, American Harmony. I'm just using a different section of it. So it fits. It's also a pretty small pattern. It's, let me tell you the stitch count. 75 by 87. It's so small. So it should work up pretty quick. This is what I have so far. I'm just using DMC 310, two strands over two. This was the, um, that 36 count linen. So I have a little bit of the vase down below, some of the leaves. I got to the bird and whatever he's chewing on there. And I did this actually, um, not all of it, but most of it I did this morning because I was watching um, Jessie. Jessie Marie does stuff. Her um, She had a whip parade recently. And um, the challenge was 
to stitch something, it, it was really long. It was like a two and a half hour whip parade. And so the challenge was to st- post like a before and an after, like work on something while watching the video and then post a picture of like what your project looks like at the beginning of the whip parade and what, look, what it looked like after. So I did that on Instagram this morning. So I actually got a good chunk, like basically this, all this, and then the top of the vase. I got a pretty good chunk um, done this morning. So I could try to finish this, I think, this next month. It's kind of nice doing monochromatic pieces, you know? Okay, that was my new starts. I'm going to have a sip of tea, and then we're going to get into plans. Mm. I do also want to just check my notes real quick and make sure I didn't forget something. I mean, it, well, I didn't make a lot of progress on a lot of items this month because I change everything around so much. And also I haven't had much stitch. I know it looks like I've had a lot of stitch time. Well, no, I have had a lot of stitch time, but it's been a lot of like sleepy stitch time, like an hour or two in the evenings, which is great, but I, my eyes are so tired. So I, you know, get maybe 50 stitches done when I should be getting like 200 stitches done, but whatever, whatever I can do is good. Um, Yeah, no, I said everything I wanted to say about that stuff. So, okay, let's get to something exciting. So I'm going to sell something and I'm going to sell it with another fellow stitcher who you all know and love, I think, um, Matt, who's MBC Stitcher. I asked him if he wanted to sell something that um, I got and I saw that he got it too. Well, something similar. So we are going to start a sell. And we want you guys to join with us, all of you, everyone to join with us if if it's your thing. Um, so the sell is the Autumn Lane Witchery Sell, not Autumn Lane Stitchery, but Autumn Lane Witchery Sell. And the sell is to stitch any, any witch pattern from um, Autumn Lane Stitchery. They have so many. The one I'm choosing is the collectors where's the name of it there's the name of it the collectors and it's this creepy thing here and i'm stitching i'm trying to a lot of my new starts no sorry we're in plans now a lot of my plans i'm adding some kind of creepy stitching because um i want to stitch some things that are for you know with steve in mind too like i stitch a lot of floral and botanical kind of things and um, these speak more to him. So I picked this one. I, I, I personally like all the teals in it too. So I think it's going to be fun to stitch. I got, I don't have fabric for it, but I got the threads and I can show you. It's all DMC. They look like this. So it's going to be very pretty. I like, see all these kind of tealy greens? There's bright greens in there too. That'll be nice. If you look at the picture very closely, to me, the fabric looks green. Um, so I need to find fabric for that. I have some coming. I got, I got a green from Garon Stitchery and I'm going to see if that works. This should be very interesting because it's a lot of big blocks of color. Like look at those trees. That's all DMC 310 or like the tree behind it back here. There's big blocks, like all these collectors back here. Those witches are all big blocks of color. It's going to be a lot of stitching, but, um, I think it was Jesse, Jesse Marie this morning. She, um, she's doing Lunar Witch, which is the one that Matt's doing too. And um, I want to do that one too, but let's just do one at a time for right now. Um, what was Jesse Marie saying? Oh, that it's kind of like not mindless stitching, but kind of because it's just like huge blocks of color. So you could kind of like almost outline the stitches and then like fill in. So I'm hoping that will go well. There's also some kind of interesting, like, see in the hat, there's like little bits of back, back stitching that should be kind of nice, interesting details. So we'll see how it goes. I'm excited to try it. I'm excited to sell it with Matt. And uh, with all of you, please feel free to join in. We were even saying um, that it could be like a, an Autumn Lane witch that you've already started because there are so many I think they've done. And if you just like, you could use the hashtag to post your progress and then we can just kind of see what witches everybody's stitching on. So Autumn Lane Witchery Sal is the hashtag and I'm super excited. We're going to start on the 15th, Matt and I. Um, 
we had kind of talked about when we everything would be ready because we're still I think Matt's still kitting his up and he's got some other stuff going on and then um I'm waiting I gotta figure out my fabric still so it'll be a little bit so the 15th but I mean jump right in if you'd like to I think I'll, I'll post a thing on um Instagram about it and then you know if you already have one in progress or if you're planning on starting one like go for it. Go ahead and start it. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what everybody's stitching on. I want to know if anyone else is stitching the collectors. I'd love to see what that looks like. Um, I'm pretty excited. I hope I can find the right fabric for it. I'm also kind of wondering if I should do like <clears throat> this. This looks like it's on linen. I think it was a Seraphim. Yeah. The called for fabric is Yule by Seraphim Fabrics. I've never tried a Seraphim before. The one that I ordered from Garon is a Fiber on a whim, I think. I think it's fiber on a whim pistachio. I'm going to see what it looks like. And I'm going to lay these colors out and just make sure, you know, they all look okay on whatever comes. But what I was saying is that I think it would look really beautiful on linen because like there, the marbling on linen would add to the kind of foggy effect in the background. I'm kind of worried about like the ease of stitching on linen though, just because there's so much stitching. I know it would zip up a lot faster on Ada, but you know how marbling doesn't happen as easily on Ada. So, you know, the dye. So I'm just going to have to see what, you know, I'll look at the fabrics, I'll think about it, and then I'll make a decision about what to do. So the 15th, Autumn Lane Witchery Sal, um, but, you know, feel free to start it whenever you're ready to start it or if you've already started it. That's going to be really fun. I'm excited. I love a sow. I don't always follow through, but I love a sow. Um, the other new, no, the other plans, I'm going to try to put pictures up for those because I don't have printouts or anything to show you. Um, I'm, do, I'm still doing Marathon for MMIW. I'm attaching the link in case you want to check it out. Uh, I got to post more on Facebook for my Facebook people because I haven't gotten a lot of donations from the Facebook crew. I've gotten a lot of donations from you. Thank you, Stitchy Friends. Very generous of you to, to donate. And I think it's going to go to a great cause. I'm, I'm learning so much about um, Indigenous communities. Matt, actually, speaking of Matt, Matt had a really great video. Not the latest one, but maybe the one before. I don't remember which one, Matt. Where um, Matt works in law. And he gave a really interesting perspective on um, cr how crimes are dealt with in the justice system on native lands. Because native, is, is it that, well, I better not explain this. Better go watch Matt's video and get, get some interesting perspective on um, how um, prosecutions are handled on native land. And that has a lot to do with the um, murdered and missing indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit um, people on native land. So it's just kind of interesting. I'm learning more about that. I have a really interesting resource to share with you too. On YouTube, there are a couple of really great podcasters. Well, they're like YouTubers, but to me, I listen to them like I listen to a podcast. They're called Red Hoop Talk. And I think it's put out by the... Um, Bureau of Indian Affairs. And it's the woman who is um, like director of that organization and uh, another person. They're both indigenous people and they just do this podcast. It's called Red Hoop Talk, where they just talk about indigenous people's issues. It's fascinating and they are so easy to listen to. I had that on um, instead. I I took a break from floss tube and I listened to them for a little bit while stitching this week. Super fascinating. And it's just to, you like, I just don't know a lot. I don't personally know indigenous people. So I don't know anything about life for an indigenous person in any type of community. So it's just interesting to hear them talk and hear their perspectives on anything. Uh, they talk about everything. Like they had an episode where they were talking about COVID. Um, they talk about MMIW, um, G2S. And everything. They talk about everything. So they're, they're really good. It's Red Hoop Talk on YouTube. And I'll link, I'll put a link to them below. Okay. Another plan is, you know, talking about more stitching for Steve. I'm going to put a picture up for you. Uh, I was checking out Awesome Pattern Studios on Etsy. 
I've gotten patterns from them before and you're going to know them because they do those animal mandala patterns like mandala giraffe and mandala flamingo and all that. And I, I hadn't looked at them in a while and I was looking and they have a whole bunch of Star Wars patterns. And normally I wouldn't be drawn to those, but um, I asked Steve once. I don't remember what we were talking about, but I, I was, I asked him, I think the question was if I was going to stitch you something from, so he's, of course he loves Star Wars and he grew up, like he was a little boy who went to the theater to watch the original ones. And they, it was a very impactful experience for him, a, like a, a very fond childhood memory, you know? And, um, and we watch all the sequels and all that. And so I asked him like, if I was going to stitch something from Star Wars, what would be the thing that you would want? And he said, Oh, like he said, oh, of course, it would be the Millennium Falcon. And um, and I said, oh, and I, I was taken aback because Steve is very easygoing. He goes along with everybody. Like he doesn't have strong opinions about things. He just goes along with what everybody wants to do. So the fact that he had such a strong opinion on that, I said, oh, OK, tuck that away. I've got to make sure to stitch that for him. So they had Awesome Patterns Studio and Etsy has a really cute kind of, um, it's not cartoony. It's, I mean, it's a, it's sort of an artsy Millennium Falcon. So I want to stitch that one. Um, it's got like a lot of fill in parts. I think it'll be okay. It won't be too hard to stitch. I don't have fabric for it yet. So I'm gonna have to think on that I, or I'm gonna have to see it's, it could be potentially be a full coverage piece. So I could just dig around my stash and see what I have for that. So I want to start that one. I don't have all the DMC for it yet. I'm going to see how that goes. And then another one with Steve in mind, I'll put a picture up. It's called Wicked Siblings and it's by Mama Witch Stitchery, a designer on Etsy. And I didn't know about them, but I found out about them by watching, not watching. I haven't been watching, but I think I should watch Mama Loves You GB. Is, is her name Michelle? I forgot to check. Who's Mama Loves You GB. And, um, I need, I, I haven't been, I don't know where I've been. I haven't been watching her videos, but, um, I saw a thumbnail to one of her videos that had this like odd looking character who, with like a pumpkin head and leaves all around, fall leaves all around. And it, uh, right away it spoke to me. I was, and I just wanted to know, like, what is that project? So I watched that video of hers and I found out it was Mama Witch Stitchery. And I went to look at their Etsy shop and their patterns are so weird, but like also wonderful. And the one I picked out Wicked Siblings because I don't know, it just spoke to me. Like I like their faces. I like that they're holding like the skeleton animal. It's just so weird. And I still showed Steve and he loved it too. So it's got some cute details like um, on the tree. I think there's a tree and there's like a woodpecker on the tree. All those beautiful fall leaves. That'll be fun to stitch. All those different kind of shades. Um, different plants and things. There's like a lot of details on that pattern. Plus like the characters are kind of kooky. So I'm going to stitch that one. They have some really wacky patterns. They have this one with frogs and they're wearing like these um, like sort of Andean wool caps and they have jackets on it. I think they're going camping. So they have like a campfire there. I They have, yeah, they have a bunch of kind of unusual patterns. So that's the one I picked. I picked Wicked Siblings and I want to start that. Again, I don't have fabric for that one. Like on the pattern, um, I didn't look up the name of the person behind Mama Witch Stitchery, but basically they made a note that said, you have to stitch this on black fabric because there's a lot of detail around the ghosts that are flying around that will not show up unless it's on black fabric. So I need to, basically I need to find some black Ada, I think. I don't think I can stitch on black linen. That's going to be too hard for me to do. So that's going to happen as a new start if I can get my fabric situation sorted out. And then one more idea, it's really for November but knowing me, I'm probably going to start it ahead of time. November, people are doing like um, black sampler November. And I want to do that no more. I'll try to put a picture up. You know that one. It's got strong language in the center of it. And then all those sort of societal structures that we want to take down, like um, racism, xenophobia, 
sexism and all that. So I thought that'd be great as a black sampler. And that again, like, um, I don't mind strong language. Um, I didn't grow up using it. Steve's family uses a lot of strong language. So again, that's kind of a nod to, to him. And I know he'll appreciate it. And I, I like the sentiment of it. I like the message behind it. So um, that will be one technique. I think that people are doing that in November, the black sampler thing, but I'm probably going to start it <laughs> earlier because that's what I do. So, um, and then for other plan, that's a lot of plans, but my other plans are just to try to finish something because like I said, next month is my one year floss tube anniversary. And I'm not anywhere close to finishing anything big, but I think I could tackle like maybe a couple small, like even some of the smalls from this month. I, I want to finish something. I want to have something that I've said I've finished. I want to have a finishes section, um, even if it's small next month, just to commemorate that one year. I think that'd be really great. Um, so yeah, that those are my plans. I think I think that might be all I've got for you. I'm actually running like a little shorter than normal today at an hour and 20. Um, yeah, but I've said everything I need to say. So think about joining Autumn Lane Witchery Sal. It's going to be really fun to hear. I, I want to know like if you're doing it, what fabric are you using? I'm even, think well, I'm going to chicken out of it, I think. But I was thinking it might be kind of cool to use some kind of like a variegated thread for these two shadow people in the back. I don't know. That might create something interesting or maybe it'll mess with the pattern. I don't know. Anyway, I just want, I think it'd be fun to talk to people about what, you know, what you're doing. So let me know if you're thinking about doing it or want to do it. Um, if you're doing the collectors, definitely let me know. Cause that'd be cool to have someone who's doing the same pattern too. That's all I got everybody. Thanks so much for hanging around. We're going to check in next month and I'll think of something I might even do, I've been toying around about doing a giveaway for the one year anniversary. Um, I don't know. I just don't know what I'm, what, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't thought about it yet. So we'll catch up next month and um, I can let you know what's going on. But thank you so much for being here, for connecting, for leaving comments, for um, talking with me on Instagram, for um loving stitching like I do and being willing to talk about it and hear about it. Um, I just, I love connecting with all of you. It's been so, so fun. And um, these, these kind of monthly check-ins, I really, really look forward to them. I really, really look forward to like the whole month. I'm just putting things aside thinking like, oh, I can't wait to tell them about this. I can't wait to tell them about this. So I, I do a lot of things with you in my, with, I love stitching. So I do it with me and mine, but I do it with you in mind too, you know, wanting to share with you. So thank you. And um, I'm going to talk to you again in a month and um, hope you're having a wonderful weekend and having some wonderful stitchy time and we will chat soon. I'll talk to you later. Bye.